We begin with breaking news out of Gabon, where a group of senior military leaders have announced they are in charge of the country and have put the president under house arrest. That's just days after a controversial election in the oil-rich African nation. Well, the military leaders appeared on national television to announce the cancellation of Saturday's election result. The Electoral Commission had said President Ali Bongo won a third term in office. The military have also dissolved all institutions. Well, that announcement triggered celebrations on the streets of the capital, Libreville. Hundreds turned out. There had been criticism of the government for the way Saturday's election was organised. Now, in just a moment, we'll be speaking to our correspondents covering all aspects of this story for us. We have Catherine Soy in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. We have Natasha Butler. She'll be giving reaction to the events in Gabon from Paris. Ahmed Idris is in Niger's capital, Niamey. And we have Nicholas Hack in Senegal's capital, Dakar. But first, this report from Stephanie Decker. À cela s'ajoute une gouvernance irresponsable. It was just before 6 a.m. when Gabon woke up to this. After noting an irresponsible, unpredictable governance which results in a continuous deterioration of social cohesion that risks leading the country to chaos, today, the 30th of August, 2023, in the name of the Gabonese people, we, the Committee of the Transition and the Restoration of Institutions, have decided to defend the peace, putting an end to the regime in place. Senior military officers appearing on national television, announcing the seizure of power. That happened soon after the country's election body announced that President Ali Bongo had won a third term in office. The president put under house arrest, and now this video has emerged. I'm to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world, to tell them to make noise, to make noise, for the people here have arrested me and my family. But many people in the capital, Libreville, have been welcoming and celebrating the news. The Bongo era, the Bongoism is over. Uh, that was clearly something that any analyst who is serious about African politics could see happening. And truly, uh, Ali Bongo was no longer in the hearts of the population in Gabon. He was not accepted by the opposition that was this time around very strong behind uh, its candidate, its main candidate, Albert Onda Oso. And also, there was some problem between Ali Bongo and France. Opposition candidates complained of missing ballot papers for the general election on Saturday. Rights organizations condemned the ban on foreign media and international observers. Government leaders cut internet access and imposed a night curfew after the elections, raising concern about transparency. Both previous wins by Bongo were also challenged as fraudulent by opposition candidates. Bongo has ruled oil-rich Gabon since his father and previous president died in 2009. The family has governed the country for 56 years. Bongo suffered a stroke in 2018, which incapacitated him for almost a year, increasing calls for him to step aside. A failed coup attempt followed in 2019, when soldiers who mutinied were killed or jailed. The military has released this video showing soldiers celebrating following the announcement. Gabon's borders are now closed and all state institutions dissolved. Stephanie Decker, Al Jazeera. Let's speak now to our correspondent, Nick Hack. He joins us from Dakar in Senegal. First of all, Nick, just bring us up to speed with what's the latest that we're hearing from Gabon on this day. Well, there's this extraordinary video circulating on social media, widely uh, being shared in Libreville and in Gabon. One of the president, Ali Bongo, uh, who up until last night appeared invincible at the helm of this uh, family dynasty that has been in power for the last 56 year, years. He appeared weak, um, calling for help um, inside house arrest, his own presidential palace. An extraordinary moment for a lot of Gabonese who have seen him rule or his family rule for so long. And this has really sparked celebrations that we're seeing right now 
in the streets of the capital. Uh, we're hearing that even soldiers are offering drinks to those that are celebrating on the streets with people chanting, Gabon is finally free. Um, this is really a turning point for the history of Gabon, but certainly for this uh, former French colony that has strong and uh, important links to, to France. Laura? So, Nick, we're also getting some information now on who has led this coup. What do we know about him? Yes, his name is Brice Olivier Clotter in Guima, and he was, in fact, the head of the presidential guard, the man responsible to protect Ali Bongo from such military coups. Well, now he's the one that's detaining Ali Bongo under house arrest. Now, he was a close ally to uh, Ali Bongo. He was also uh, um, uh, a close aide to his father, Omar Bongo, who was the previous president. But interestingly enough, he was also um, named in a coup attempt in 2019 when Ali, Ali Bongo suffered from a stroke. And then he was dispatched to Dakar, Senegal, where he was the military attache. He has been trained in Morocco, and he is the head of the presidential guard. We saw him shake hands with uh, uh, President Emmanuel Macron back in June when there was an official visit of uh, Ali Bongo there at the Elysee. So he's known to the French. He's been in, 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 around the, the power of Ali Bongo or in the spheres of Ali Bongo. Well, what's extraordinary is these military juntas now that have um, not only arrested Ali Bongo, but also his son and close associates going on national television, accusing, the, accusing them of high treason, charging them with... Um, um, trafficking, with corruption, with emptying state coffers. And on national television, we saw the, the soldiers saying that they will be brought to justice, something that many Gabonese who live in poverty in this oil uh, wealthy country have been waiting for. Okay. Laura? Nick Hack bringing us the latest there on events in Gabon. Thanks very much, Nick. Well, the situation there in Gabon, it marks the 10th coup or attempted takeover in West and Central Africa in the last three years. Regional leaders are still trying to negotiate a return to democracy in Niger after last month's coup there. Burkina Faso saw two coups last year. In the second instance, Captain Ibrahim Traore forced out his own military colleague last September. In 2021, Ghanaian soldiers took power from President Alpha Conde, who was seeking a controversial third term. And Mali has also seen two coups since 2020, both of them orchestrated by the current leader, Asimi Goita. Oh, Ahmed Idris joins us now live from Naomi. That's the capital of Niger, where the last military coup took place just last month. And Ahmed, we're hearing some people already calling this a francophone spring. Are we seeing a pattern here? Exactly. There is a pattern and most of all these coups you're talking about in the introduction are fueled by disenchantment with the leadership in the various francophone countries and of course with the relationship between the leadership and France, especially in the spheres of economy and defense. Uh, people are talking about, despite the presence of France, especially in the Sahel, violence still continues. and. Uh, armed groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIL are holding vast territory uh, in some of these Sahelian countries. Uh, I spoke to one political and uh, political and security analyst here uh, just a few hours ago, and he said the situation developing now in Gabon sort of validates or justifies what people in Niger have all been have been talking about all the time that. There has been a neglect, a total neglect of the voting population. And of course, the romance between their leaders and France uh, leads to the sort of uh, the over exploitation of resources with little to show for the ordinary person on the street. So there is this widespread disenchantment and, of course, anti French sentiment spreading across the Sahel. And now uh, there are concerns that this will spread even farther beyond uh, francophone countries. So and now that many of the countries we're talking about, democratically elected governments are still struggling to deliver uh, democracy dividends to their people. Indeed. So what are you hearing from the Niger street? What are people there saying about the latest coup in Gabon? 
people are really, really uh, saying that this is, uh, it's about time. It's about time to cut ties to France. It's about time to liberate uh, ourselves. Uh, we haven't seen Gabon or protesters in Gabon or celebrants in Gabon uh, flashing Russian, uh, Chinese or even North Korean flags the way we saw them here in uh, Niger. But the Niger situation is uh, probably different from what obtains in uh, in, in Gabon, mm. simply because Niger is struggling with security uh, issues here, and it's also uh, struggling economically. The level of poverty here is really, really striking, and people are really disenchanted that poverty is widespread now, and there is little to show for it. And right now, they believe that what they have uh, in, in place now, the military government here, could, of course, cut ties with France. and probably struck a new deal with uh, countries of the East, especially China and Russia. Ahmed Idris reporting there from Naomi in Niger. Thanks very much, Ahmed. Well, the whole world has been reacting to the coup in Gabon. French Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne said France, Gabon's former colonial ruler, was following the situation closely. China, meanwhile, is calling for the safety of President Bongo to be guaranteed by the coup leaders. And the EU's foreign policy chief, Josep Borrell, has expressed concern for the stability of the whole region after yet another military coup. Let's join Natasha Butler in Paris now. Natasha, you're outside the Gabonese embassy there in the French capital. What are people saying there? Yeah, dozens of people have gathered here outside uh, the Gabonese uh, embassy in Paris in the centre in a very upscale area, in fact an area where the uh, Bongo family own a lot of real estate, a huge uh, real estate portfolio in Paris has often been the source of some controversy and people have been celebrating. I'm going to step out of the way and we're going to pan around and uh, show you some people dancing now, waving uh, flags, a few more people are coming. And what some of them have been telling me is that they feel as if today is a new day for Gabon. They feel as if this is a peaceful uh, revolution. They all hope for a peaceful transition and for democracy. And they've also been talking a lot about France, the former colonial power. Uh, they say that they feel that France has had ample opportunity to support the Gabonese people rather than the Bongo family. This feeling that France has uh, for so long had these ties with the Bongo family supported them even though people here say that uh, Omar Bongo the former uh, leader of Gabon and Ali Bongo uh, both of them uh, they say have done very little for ordinary people have done very little to modernize the country and had they done so then perhaps they would have been supported but as they've done nothing this is what people here have been saying they need to move on and France needs to understand that uh, people in Gabon want to be in control of their own destiny uh, and does France understand that? What's been the reaction of the French political elite? Well, we've heard from the French uh, Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne saying that Paris is watching the situation very closely. Also from the spokesperson for the French government saying that they, Paris condemns the coup d'etat, that Paris has called on people in Gabon to uphold and respect the uh, results of the recent elections. So certainly that clashes uh, with what people here are saying because many of them have said that this election was not free, was not fair, and therefore those results, as far as they are concerned, are null and void. So that's what we've been hearing here in French political circles. No surprise, perhaps, because France has long had these ties with the leadership in Gabon. There are a number of military personnel in Gabon on a French base. There are a lot of French interests in Gabon in terms of large multinationals. Total uh, Energy, for example, the big energy uh, giant, uh, Eremet, a big mining giant. Uh, uh, Eremet's actually said that it's suspending its operations in the country and seeing how the situation develops. There is no doubt that many French businesses would be concerned about what is happening in Gabon. But as I said, people here are saying that's part of the problem, that those businesses have been uh, making a lot of money, that money has been leaving the country and has now not been uh, spread amongst the population, the ordinary people in Gabon. And that is why we need to change this circle, this network of alliances between Paris and Libreville that has really only helped the privileged and left others behind. Natasha Butler bringing us the view there from outside the Gabon embassy in Paris. Thanks very much, Natasha.
OK, well, let's go back onto the African continent now. We can go to Nairobi, where we can speak to Catherine Soy. Because, Catherine, you were just trying to get to Gabon for Saturday's presidential election, but you failed to get accreditation. Talk us through what happened and why. Yes, and uh, we, I have been talking to uh, many people in Gabon um, throughout this election period. And yes, we have been trying to get accreditation um, to travel to the country and uh, cover the election. It's been uh, three weeks um, trying to get that. It was not possible. And we are not just talking about us, Al Jazeera. Um, other uh, international journalists were also denied accreditation accreditation as well. And we also know that uh, international ob observers like the U.S. and uh, European Union and others were also denied accreditation, so they were not able uh, to observe the elections in uh, Gabon. And that's why a lot of people that we've talked to in Gabon uh, say that they do not believe that that election was credible. Um, they are very frustrated as well, those ones that we have been uh, talking to, and uh, we have seen through uh, the weeks um, a lot of changes that were made by the Electoral Commission, changes pertaining to uh, the election and the procedures um, as well. Uh, we uh, saw in the lead up uh, to the election, we saw uh, the internet being shut down, uh, we saw um, curfews that were imposed as well. And, you know, during the uh, campaign period itself, uh, on, uh, the on the last day um, of campaigns, uh, President Ali Bongo, uh, when he made his speech, he said uh, that uh, he uh, knows that there are some individuals who are trying to overthrow uh, the government. And we have also been uh, hearing um, throughout that time um, ruling parties party officials uh, who were very, very uncomfortable about this grouping of opposition leaders, um, presidential candidates who uh, endorsed a single uh, presidential uh, candidate. And this had not happened before. So there was a lot of uh, jitteriness. A lot of people uh, in the ruling party were very uncomfortable about that. And that's why we saw this uh, very fast uh, development. Uh, the internet cut off and things like that as well. So we were in Gabon uh, in 2016 covering the election there. Um, that election was disputed as well. The the um, the, uh, the, pre the 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 uh, the opposition leader then, um, that the, the opposition leader uh, then um, said that the election was rigged. There mm. was post-election uh, violence. Uh, people died. Other, uh, others were injured uh, as well. So right now, the Gabonese uh, who lived with all and for that uh, frustration uh, say that. They just wanted change, and they're seeing this change, and they're very happy about it. Indeed. OK, Catherine, thanks very much for bringing us a little bit of context there. Catherine Soy reporting from Nairobi. Let's speak now to Marie Roger Beloa. She's the editor of Africa International and joins us from Yaoundé in Cameroon. Great to have you with us. I just want to bring you some news that we're getting in from the African Union, calling an urgent meeting with Burundi, Senegal and Cameroon to analyze the situation in Gabon. The AU calling it a coup attempt. What do you make of that? Well, uh, as soon as uh, the dust is not settled yet, we are not sure that the, the coup uh, has been successful. Mm. But there are many signs. For us, uh, I mean, the African Union is an official organization. They need to, to make official statements. But what we see in the streets, what we see um, happening hour by hour, uh, looks like uh, the coup is now done. So, and, um, uh, I mean, in Central Africa, uh, everybody has been turning um, the, the, the 
the view or the eyes to uh, towards South, uh, Central Africa, but uh, the situation is, I would say, quite different in a way that uh, um, the, the, the main trigger uh, of coup d'etat in, in West Africa is insecurity, terrorism in Sahel, and uh, and uh, all that that set of issues. And in Central Africa, we have uh, president who have been here for a while, uh, some of them for a very long time. Uh, but Gabon, it was is a specific case where in uh, in 14 years there was not a single uh, free and fair election, and it, it, the process was always very brutal with deaths and casualties like uh, what uh, the previous uh, uh, interviewer said. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, and moreover, and uh, on top of it, the president uh, was physically unfit to uh, to govern, to rule the country. But he didn't want to back down, to retire, and uh, and that was being felt as very irresponsible. Uh, and uh, so, for five years, uh, the, the, we we just have news of uh, about his health. We see very embarrassing scenes of him over the world stage, uh, uh, you know, uh, showcasing his illness and his weakness. So very, the Gabonese and Africans are, uh, in general, are very, were very embarrassed. Mm. And in the meantime, uh, the country was not governed. I mean, you, you, if you see all the criteria, economy, health, uh, education, you name it, Everything is sort of in a halt, uh, and uh, uh, the the Gabonese uh, opposition was very responsible. But what, a, what about? Let's just jump in there because I'm quite interested to see uh, what the feeling is in neighbouring Cameroon because there you've got a leader who's 90 years old. So in a rather similar situation, one might say to Ali Bongo, where I should imagine people are looking at his health and his longevity. How worried should he be that he might be next? Okay, uh, uh, of course, since the, 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 uh, there is this uh, coup epidemic, as they call it, in West Africa, people think of uh, the situation in Central Africa and many in several countries as well. Um, and uh, you can feel some kind of anxiety or people think, uh, I, you definitely, I'm definitely sure that it, people think of, uh, of it also in Cameroon, but the situation is quite different um, because uh, since the coup, uh, the coup attempt in 1984, um, the army and all security forces have been so divided and organized in a way that a coup is very, very difficult. I don't say it's impossible, but it's very, very difficult mm. uh, to succeed. You can try something, but uh, uh, the, the the chances that you, you get it to, you bring that to an end, are very thin. So, um, and also, what we see is that uh, people have sort of accepted that the current president will finish his term and maybe we'll die in power, and okay. uh, they are waiting for what will happen next. Okay, Marie Roger, I just want to get another question in because you are normally based in Paris, and many of these leaders, where we have seen in countries of where we've seen these coups, have been called puppets of the French. These are ex-colonial countries. Do you think that is true? Is that a fair assessment that they remain puppets of the French? That Gabon. Um, well, Gabon, the government, is a country which has been traditionally very close to France. And the first president after independence, uh, Léon used to say, we have, uh, our loyalty goes to two countries, to France and to Gabon, you know, so, uh, and uh, the whole, France, uh, Gabon has been considered as the heart of the famous France-Afrique system, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, the former president Bongo, Ali Bongo's father, was a very, uh, we'll say, respected figure in in, in that system. Mm. Uh, he was he was really at the core of the system. 
but now Ali Bongo has been trying to showcase some kind kind of ind independence because, for instance, he joined the Commonwealth where they even if they have no tradition uh, with English or with uh, Britain, like unlike Cameroon, who has mm. uh, who was under British and French rule, but they decided to show independence in. Uh, in, in joining that organization, for instance, okay. this kind of thing. But basically, uh, uh, you know, France companies are still very strong there, so, and, and I would say the cultural ties are very strong. Okay, Marie Roger Bellau, we have to leave it there. But thanks so much for taking the time to join us there from Cameroon.